Welcome to I Like to Online. One of the viewers asked me a question and then I realized, well, I don't have any videos to answer that question. So let me make a few extra videos regarding capacitors and how to take capacitors that are either charged or not charged, disconnect them from the circuits and then reconnect them together in a different arrangement. For example, let's say we have two capacitors, one that's connected to a 20 volt battery and the other one that has no charge. In this example, since we start with a very simple example, both capacitors are the same size of two microfarads. Using the definition of capacitance, we know it's equal to the ratio of the charge on the capacitor divided by the voltage across the capacitor. We can then solve for the charge, which in this case would be equal to 40 microcoulombs. What happens now when you take that one capacitor and you connect it to a capacitor that's not charged in this arrangement? Well, that's the type of problems we're going to be looking at. It turned out as I was starting to work on it, there's a lot of different combinations you can have with two or even three capacitors. So I'm planning on putting some videos together that shows how to disconnect and reconnect capacitors with different charges, sometimes of different sizes, in different ways, and try to figure out what is the end result, how much charge will be on each capacitor. So hopefully that will answer some of those questions that I've been getting about these kinds of problems. So first of all, the simple example is we connect one that contains a charge of 40 microcoulombs to a capacitor that has no charge. They happen to be the same size capacitors. Well, what you'd expect now is that some of this charge will go over to the other capacitor because here these charges are bunched together. They repel each other. They don't like to be close together. So these charges are going to begin to migrate to the other capacitor. When a positive charge goes over here, it repels positive charge from this side of the capacitor, making this side negative. And of course, that positive charge will then move to this direction and cancel out one of those negative charges. But in other words, the amount of charge in this capacitor will decrease and the amount of charge on that capacitor will increase. Now that means that at the end, when you reach steady state, this capacitor will have charge Q1 on it and this capacitor will have charge Q2 on it. The question is, what is Q1 and Q2 equal to once they reach steady state? How do you solve that? Well, in this case, what we're going to do is realize using Kirchhoff's rules that if we go all the way around the circuit, the voltages should add up to zero. So here we have voltage one, the positive end over here, the negative end over here, and here we have voltage two with the positive end over here and the negative end over there, which means that if we add them together, they should add up to zero. So going across this capacitor from here to here, that's a positive V1. And then going across the capacitor over here from the positive negative, that would be negative V2. And when you add them together, you get zero. So that's one thing you do know that if you go all the way around the circuit, all the voltages must add up to zero. Then coming back over here, we can then also say using the definition of capacitance that the voltage is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. So at the steady state, what we can say here is that voltage one will be equal to charge one divided by capacitance one minus voltage two, that would be charge two divided by capacitance two, and that must equal zero. Now in this case, we let C1 equal to C2. So that means if they're equal in value, we can multiply both sides of the equation by the value of C1 and C2, which is two microcoulombs. And so when we do that, we can go ahead and say that Q1 minus Q2 is equal to zero. And that means that Q1 is equal to Q2. So they must be equal to one another. Now, we started with an initial amount of charge. We started with an initial amount of charge, which was equal to 40 microcoulombs. So the other equation we can have is that Q1 plus Q2, the two charges together, must equal the initial charge we had, called that large Q1, which in this case, Q1 plus Q2 would then equal 40 microcoulombs. Which means that Q1, Q1, is equal to 40 microcoulombs minus Q2. And since Q2 is equal to Q1, we can write that Q1 is equal to 40 microcoulombs minus Q1, or 
I'm running out of room here. Let me come over here to finish it. So we can then say that when we bring that Q1 across, 2Q1 is equal to 40 microcoulombs, which means that Q1 is equal to 20 microcoulombs. And if Q1 is equal to 20 microcoulombs and it's equal to Q2, that means that Q2 is also equal to 20 microcoulombs. Now you may say, well, why did it go through all that work to come up with something that was actually that simple? Once you realized that Q1 had to be equal to Q2 and you started with 40 microcoulombs, it would be easy to conclude that yes, each will have half of that, therefore they're each 20 microcoulombs. But I just wanted to see that there's a procedure that we'd like to follow because later on, when the problems get more difficult, you're not going to be able to just look at it and say, oh, that's the answer. You're going to need to follow some sort of procedure. So in this case, the way we hooked up the capacitors, we can say that the voltages add up to zero, then you find the replacement of voltage as Q over C, and then you realize that the total charge you end up with had to equal the initial charge it started with because the charges can't go anywhere, they don't cancel out. And from this, you can conclude that Q1 equals Q2 because the capacitors were the same. So we're going to see some additional examples that become a little bit more complicated. And if you have to do these kind of problems, you're probably glad you have something to look for. All right, so that's our first one. We'll have many more to go.